This is the ominous red glow of singlet oxygen, and this is something I was doing more for my own curiosity than for a video, as the science here is a bit more complex than I'm used to being able to simplify, but I figure this is something some people might want to see, so I'll do my best. Now, if you've ever taken inorganic chemistry, you might remember MO bonding diagrams like these, illustrating how molecules share electrons to fill their sigma and pi bonding and degenerate antibonding orbitals. If you were to hypothetically draw an MO diagram for diatomic oxygen, you would find three distinct states by manipulating the occupancy and spin orientation of the two electrons in the two degenerate pi antibonding orbitals. In quantum mechanics, these states can be described as either singlet, doublet, or triplet, depending on the number of unpaired electrons that result. No unpaired electrons result in a singlet state, one unpaired electron results in a doublet, and two unpaired electrons results in a triplet state. This terminology comes from the number of spectral lines that result from the emission spectra when a molecule is energized, which I'll be explaining in depth in an upcoming video. Anyway, the point is that there are three possible diagrams for diatomic oxygen. Two of them are singlets, while one is a triplet ground state. These singlet states are excited states of oxygen and both extremely short-lived, degrading to the ground state within milliseconds. This results in an extremely weak phosphorescence around 1200 nanometers, which is invisible without advanced equipment. However, at high concentrations of singlet oxygen, a red glow can be observed at 634 nanometers and 703 nanometers. This is the result of chemiluminescence that's emitted when two singlet oxygen molecules collide, and despite being extremely dim, it is technically visible to the naked eye. Now, in order to demonstrate this, you need to make a lot of singlet oxygen confined to a small space. And this can be achieved by reacting concentrated hydrogen peroxide with hypochlorite, as you've been seeing me do here. This light is actually so dim that my DSLR can't pick it up, and my phone camera can only pick it up if it uses such a high ISO that the resulting video is a grainy mess. One way I found to make the light produced both brighter and more sustained is to react alkaline peroxide directly with chlorine gas. To do this, I just set up a simple chlorine generator by dripping hydrochloric acid onto calcium hypochlorite. I then fed the chlorine gas produced through a cold finger packed with calcium chloride, and this was done to dry the gas since I broke my drying bottle. Anyway, once the chlorine gas is dry, it's fed into a beaker containing 32% hydrogen peroxide that I've mixed with some sodium hydroxide. These three chemicals immediately react forming water, sodium chloride, and singlet oxygen. And with this method, you can not only see the chemiluminescence within the bubbles, but also across the surface of the liquid, which I think is really cool. This reaction also generates an immense amount of heat, which can quickly cause boiling. This can be a hazard in of itself, not to mention the chlorine gas and the singlet oxygen. On that note, singlet oxygen is immensely more reactive toward organic compounds than ground state oxygen, and this makes it far more dangerous to humans. In fact, singlet oxygen is responsible for photodegradation, or sun bleaching. This is because UV light from the sun is able to transiently excite oxygen to the singlet state, which will rapidly react with any organic compound it's in contact with, causing chemical breakdown. As a result, any organic compound that spends too much time in the sun will eventually decompose, and in the case of organic pigments, this results in a bleaching effect. In any case, as I said, I didn't really plan to make a video on this, but I figured some of you out there might find it interesting. Regardless, I hope you found it interesting, and as always, a big shout out to all my incredible patrons for their generous contributions. Your support is vital and very appreciated. To everyone else, if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, or even by becoming a patron yourself. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.